How you doing guys? This is Dana from Massland Investing. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, what I want to talk about today is actually the basics of land investing. Um, we're teaching lessons. We're teaching the ABCs of land investing. We have an intermediate course and also we're going to offer a master course, a master series. But I think I just want to make this video just to kind of give you guys, uh, the newcomers, beginners, a basic understanding of what land investing really is. I put a couple things on the board I just want to go over. Uh, first of all, there's basically two types of land investing. the short term and long term. Um, short term is what we're going to basically talk about, but long term, let me just briefly go over that real quick. Uh, long term basically is uh, you're buying for speculation, meaning you're going to buy long term, you're anticipating that there's going to be growth in that particular circumference of an area, for instance, the city surroundings. Uh, you've done some due diligence, you went into the town, looked at the master plan, stuff like that, and you're buying 20, 30 years out uh, for part of your retirement portfolio, anticipating with your due diligence that you know eventually it's going to grow out towards that area, uh, and you're going to have some retirement money, let the equity grow over time, maybe put somebody in place to pay the bills while the equity grows. Uh, you could be buying for building, you're going to buy a home down the road, so that'd be long term. Uh, you might be buying for recreation, for a place to ride your RVs, for camping such as that, uh, maybe a hunting camp. Uh, you might be looking towards some type of farming venue, which is really big nowadays. It's all different types of farming. Uh, that's basically it. You might be buying it for the kids, uh, for their retirement. So that would be kind of some snares for long-term investing. But basically what I want to talk about is short-term investing. And here's kind of the rundown, what I put here. This is really the basics. First of all, short-term investing, what you're trying to do is you're trying to find motivated sellers. And you're going to try to buy at wholesale. Then you're going to find motivated buyers, and you're going to sell at retail or a discount. Once you do that, you got to remember, you got to always keep your properties moving, and that's key. You want to buy them and sell them. Buy them and sell them. Always keep your money moving. Uh, one thing you want to make sure is you're never overpaying. Another thing is not get, getting emotionally involved. And when I say emotionally involved, I've even done it in the past. I bought so many properties, what we do is myself and a partner, one time when I had a partner doing it, we bought and sold hundreds of properties. Every so often I'd see properties I thought I needed for some strange reason. I'd pull them off the list, I'd pay for them cash at wholesale, and then I would keep the property. So that's what I mean emotionally involved. I mean, unless you have good intent, you don't need a hundred properties, you really don't. So remember that. Uh, always knowing the value of a deal. When I say value of a deal, is that something you determine before you start buying? You need to know what the wholesale price needs to be compared to what the retail price across the board is for that particular type of land. Once you narrow that down, it gives you a basic, basic understanding. So if you know, for instance, the basic across the board is 20000 value, you want to be buying around 25% is the rule of thumb that I use. So five grand you're going to spend for a $20,000 property. Uh, and then always, uh, like I said, knowing the value of the deal, and then basically you just repeat that whole process. Now, there's a lot of things that go in between that. Obviously, it's uh, you know knowing how to find motivated sellers, uh, knowing how to understand a property, doing your due diligence, uh, how to build a team that you can work with, that you can trust, understand what you're doing, and it all works seamlessly together. Uh, picking out good realtors. Uh, there's many factors involved, uh, doing your due diligence, making sure what you're buying is what you're buying, um, using a, the correct title company to make sure you get clear title, uh, whether you chose to use that title company to do the whole process or not, it, you need to have that as part of your team, part of your team. So that's basically the basics of it, but mainly it's find motivated sellers, find motivated buyers, buy at a wholesale, sell at retail or a discount just under retail then basically not get mostly involved, and then repeat the whole process. And that's basically what happens with short-term sellers. And funny enough, with short-term investing, what ha you'll find that most people that are buying the property from you, uh, they're not going to build on it. They're actually in the same business. They're investors. They're, they're buying, uh, hoping the prices will go up. Uh, they might find your prices just under retail. They see some value in that, and they want to invest in, and resell, which is fine. I mean, I, I've sold to a lot of people that have bought and uh, bought from us, bought from myself, and a year later they made some more money. A lot of times I've 
because I move so much property, I don't try to get rich in each one. I preach that. I'll preach that in all my lessons. Don't try to get greedy. If they're valued at 20, try to sell them at 18, 19. This way you move your product first. You keep your money flowing. So that gives a little, that lends a lot of, little opportunity to another investor that knows you're selling. I call it a retail, just under retail. A discount would be maybe 16, 15. You bought it at five. You got a few, a couple of grand into it. That's a discount price. Now, just under retail would be if it's at 20, and you're going to sell at 6, 17, 18, 19. That's still close to retail, in my opinion. So, there's always some, there's always some meat left in the bone for people be coming, coming after you. So. The process is, like I say, you want to keep your money rolling. You want to do one thing and one thing good. Buy and sell property, keep your product moving, keep the money flowing, and then the whole process works seamlessly and you stay in business much longer. Don't get emotionally involved. But basically, that's the basics of it. So, it's long term and short term. Long term, we'll go discuss in the later lessons. Short term, I'll go into much more detail. I've gone into more detail on the ABCs of land investing, which a lot of that's available for free. When we get into the intermediate course and then to the master series, I'm actually going to provide uh, what I call the perfect one-page contract. I'm going to provide the perfect postcard that I've used over years. I'm going to teach you how I've made money and made over a million dollars, almost $2 million in a dead market where nobody was buying. Uh, ways that I've used that I've made about $3 million in about two years with only $2,000 invested. So that's some of the master series stuff. But the basics is long-term, short-term. Uh, long term would be speculative buying or buying for your own use in the future, building, uh, farming, buying for the kids' retirement, buying it for your retirement, buying it to subdivide and plot it out and be a uh, developer down the road. Or like I said, buying long term with speculative buying, uh, anticipating the, the, the circumference of that city to expand, which it will, anywhere you've lived near a city. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? And then short term, like I said, is basically get in, get out, get in, get out. Uh, buying cheap, selling at retail, but what I mean by that is buying wholesale, uh, putting together a buyer's list of builders, uh, buyers like to buy a discount, uh, stuff like that. So it's a, it's a real simple formula. I mean, there's, there's a lot tougher businesses out there. I think a lot of guys make it complicated. I'm a little older than a lot of these guys online and YouTube that are teaching it. And God bless them, there's some shoppies out there. But uh, my teachings, my methods uh, are real simple. I cut out all the nonsense. Uh, I'm not too animated with it, automated, I should say. Um, I just, over the years, I, I'm one of those guys I like to keep it really simple. I don't like too much complication. I preach on building a team. I preach on sharing, uh, sharing the wealth, building a solid team, using realtors often. A lot of times I won't use them on the buy, but I'll use them on the sell. Because if you're going to work in more than one farm area, you can't be everywhere at once, so you really want to use a realtor to your benefit. Uh, build great relationships with all these people on your team along with your title company. They're an invaluable asset. They really are. You can use them for so many things. That just their information alone, if you work in a particular farm area, they have connections with builders, motivated sellers, motivated buyers. They have a list of attorneys they use. Um, they can get your title search done uh, pretty rapidly if, if you build a good relationship with them. So all those factors come, in, come into play as you, as you start to develop your business. But I just wanted to kind of basically go over the, the basics of land investing so you have a better understanding and uh, maybe it's something looking forward to as an opportunity. A lot of people I know and myself included, part-time. You can do really well part-time putting, once you learn the business, put two or three hours, uh, two or three, maybe five hours a week into it and, and you can make probably as much, if not more, than you make on, at work at a regular job a nine to five. And it, it offers you some flexibility. It's, uh, what I say is knowledge is opportunity. And uh, maybe the things you, you, you desire you can't afford. Maybe it's time you desire. Uh, when, you, when you have something like this and you, and you get the tools in your box and you have this opportunity, uh, it's, it's pretty limitless. I mean, a lot of people, have, I've done it in the past. I started part-time and turned into a full-time machine and uh, did super well with it. And then the market changed, my life changed a little bit, and I realized I like really teaching. My, that's my passion. Uh, as I said earlier, I've recently just started getting back into it. Uh, the market changes all the time. You really have to understand the four phases of a real estate cycle. I go over that quite extensively in the ABCs, but I just think it's, as a basic land investor, even as an intense full-time investor, it's something that most guys don't preach on. I think it's probably the most important thing you need to understand if you want to stay in the business. This way, when the market goes south, you're prepared. 
when, when it's in a recovery stage, you're prepared. If it's in the middle going towards a hyperinflation stage, you're prepared. So uh, that's my lesson for the day. I want to keep it real brief. I just thought about it recently. I just said, we, I really haven't talked about the basics of land investing. So I hope you have a better understanding. I hope you're inspired by it. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button. If you think it's worth sharing, obviously I always say it, share it. Uh, if you want to subscribe, we'd love to have you. Uh, if you do subscribe, hit the bell. That way you're notified every time we have a new video. I'll be constantly posting new videos. Uh, I think we have about 22 videos right now uh, on YouTube. A couple of audios. So between audio and video, about 22. We probably have, I think right now, about 10, 12 lessons that are actually on our Facebook group page that you could join as well. And all you have to do is submit an email and you'll, you'll be privy to that information, a lot of the information I've posted. So uh, I'm really excited about the future. I mean, any, any of you guys want to get involved, I mean, the future's bright. Whether Whatever type of real estate cycle we're in, whatever phase of that cycle we're in, there's opportunity. So once again, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, be generous, be kind, be safe. Uh, don't get greedy. Talk to you guys soon. Have a great holiday. Bye-bye.